Hey, what's up, family? It's your man, Andre Blake. Welcome to In The Whip. Here, I'll be talking to some artist friends of mine about uh, their inner game, their outer game, and, and keys to their success. Um, so come on and sit a spell and rap a taste as we share our journeys with you, me, and of course, my main man, my road dog, Marty Mott. <laughs> that guy back there. And uh, so welcome to In The Whip. In the whip. Yes. Today I have with me Mr. Kevin Mambo. What's up, people? As the crowd goes wild. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kev, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where'd you grow up? Uh, emigrated to Canada from Zimbabwe. Wow. When I was very young, very very young. Um, grew up in Canada. We emigrated to Toronto and then to the Midwest, where I spent most of my. Uh, formative years in Saskatchewan. Um, boarding school on the West Coast for a minute, then ended up at Montreal University. Poli, his, uh, poli sci, African history. Was gonna... That was your major? Yeah. I was going to study international law. Shut up. I wanted to do international law and work at the UN and all that well, kind I'm, of stuff. I'm glad that didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. It was, a very, it was, it was funny. So... It was uh, it was a really great experience at that time to be in Montreal, and I was in um, in a political theory class. I was in a political theory class and dropped a pen. And as I picked this pen up in this in huge auditorium class, I looked around and it was like, Who are these people? I was like, I don't belong here. Really? I just don't. I just something was the vibe was just off. I was like, I don't belong here. Right. Ooh. So when did you find music and the arts and all of that? I started off um, as a musician. Right. Um, I, did you I play. Yeah, I play guitar. I play keys. I play saxophone. Play some bass. I write. Um, I was a vocalist in the choir at the right. time, and you know, I always. Um, my mother loved music, so there was always music in the house, so I always okay. played. I started like, I think it's guitar lessons mm -hmm. came and went at seven, then right. we took a trip home to Africa, I forgot about it. So piano we're... lessons started like around eight, nine. Wow. Started playing saxophone at 10, competitive jazz at 11. Wow. Um, Who were some of your early music influences? Um, aside from the purple one. Aside from the master. Yeah. Um, Stevie. Shade. The Time, Yellow Jackets, Chick Corea, yes. Coltrane, yes. Miles, yes. Led Zeppelin, Joe Zawinul, Weather Report, Wayne Shorter, Jimi Hendrix. Got it. Classics. Um, Classics. Yeah, and then some of that fusion stuff with like Return to Forever. Being being in um in a in a jazz disc of Stevie, of course. Mm -hmm. Um Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. I mean, those were like those that. Bands. That, those were that, my, my real heavy staples. Right. But I was also listening to like Billy Squire, a lot of Billy Joel, mm -hmm. Rat, mm -hmm. um, some, some Motley Crue. Sure, I'm sure you had some Elton John in this. Oh, for sure, for oh, sure, for sure. sure. We had the A tracks. Okay. Why, right, we had right. The Elton oh, John A tracks in the house, man. <laughs> Shout out to A tracks. Shout, shout out, out to A tracks. Shout out to the A tracks, people. Shout out to the A tracks. When we were uh, listening and, and, and a lot of like. Um, my mother was also into like Joan Armour trading and Cat Stevens and Juice Newton and I was also as a kid big into Fleetwood Mac. Um, I was always, a, my mother was a huge Beatles fan so I, I became uh, and trying to be a songwriter. Just Eagles in there. Oh, but of course it was Eagles. There was, um, who, who, who was this man that sings at Jet Airliner and some people call me Maury. Um, what's the name of that band? Steve Miller Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, wow. a pretty cool. an omni, you know, and growing up in Canada too, 
in white Canada. I mean, those, I was awash in those influences. I was in a high school band coming to rehearsal one time and my boy told me, he was just like, yeah, we're gonna have to kick you out of the band. Oh, and I was like, well, why would you do that? Like everything's going really great. He's like, you just, you're too good. You're too funky. And your reply was, well then play that funky music, white boy. <laughs> Shout out, Mark. <laughs> you, sir, are too funky. I was a high school band called Green Eggs and Ham. Wow. I know, I know there's a tape around somewhere. It's a set somewhere in my song. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. Oh, Jamming wow. with friends. Wow. You know. How does young Kevin Mambo get to New York and become a soap star and end up on Luke Cage? Like, how does all that happen? I I auditioned for the school play, uh -huh. and it turned out uh, it was the king and I. And the next thing I knew, I was king. playing the king. <laughs> so I had to transfer um, music knowledge into script. And that was the first. That was my first method. Was okay. taking a score and looking at a script as a score. Where's the harmony? Where's the dissonance? Where are the themes? Where is the crescendo? Where is the piano? What is a retard? Where does it speed up? Where is it double F? You know, yeah, 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 what are the yeah. what is the arrangement? Who's in, uh, who's in harmony? Who's in discord? And I start to use that as a as a basic template, okay. and I still do to some extent mm -hmm. as an easy shorthand. Sure. So fast forward, I get into McGill. I'm going to school, but I'm also sneaking into the jazz school and taking. Jazz classes. A friend of mine let me his his alto horn. So I'm sneaking into the school, and they're thinking I'm a music student. Meanwhile, I'm a poli sci student on the other side of campus. That's crazy. But got some really great, just knowledge, and made some really good friends. And it was just it was clear that mm -hmm. I needed to also be artistically satisfied. Sure. So do, you, so do you have a mentor now? Do you still? Do you... I don't currently. Um, do you believe in mentors? I absolutely believe in mentorship. I believe in. Um, I believe in that perspective. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like it's two things. It's perspective, three things. Perspective, guidance, and shorthand. Because mm -hmm. your mentor has gone through some things and will save you a lot of time bumping into walls for no reason while you could be pushing forward. And listen, people, <laughs> listen. <laughs> while you could be pushing you forward. Get a mentor. Yeah. Uh. So I, when I came to uh, the soap, I had a, a mentor about, well, we'll talk about it in a second. So um, fast forward. I come down to, to, to SC to get my friend into the school, get him settled, but I took the time to go and interview and get a tour from the music school, the law school, and the theater school. So I, like, I got time on campus, he's getting ready for class, I'm not doing anything like that. Before I head home, let me get him straight. So we did that. Um, called SC, asked them what to do, where, where to audition. They didn't have any cities left, they were done. And they said, send a videotape. I said, I'll, I'll send a videotape. Tell me what you guys think. We'll start there. And then maybe next year I'll reapply. Mm -hmm. And because uh, they weren't, they didn't do the videotapes. So you had to do the, the live auditions for the final. Right, right, right. And um, I got in. 20, uh, 8,500 8, auditions, 26 slots. And I managed to get in on a videotape. Wow. So I didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew... Right. That something was gonna be there for me on the other side of that door. Okay. Cool. And my parents were up in arms, man. They were like, How I'm going you? to I'm going to theater school. No y'all not. But I am, no y'all not. <laughs> I'm going to the school, who's going to pay? I mean it was it was <laughs> right. it was a war. And right. and my friend wow. he he drove all the way from the west coast to come and get me and turn around and drive all the way back and we drove all the way to California. And, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to him and to his folks because his folks said, you know, worst comes to worst, we'll loan you the money for tuition. And, wow. You know. That's beautiful. They were very supportive and it ended up just sort of like kickstarting my folks into being a part of it. Right. Well, maybe he has something. <laughs> <laughs> Who, that, some other people going to pay for my child's you know? school. Oh, oh, <laughs> but, no, 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 but, no, Okay, no. so what was it? Was there a job or a moment where you saw your parents turn? Did they, was it huh. they came to see you perform? So I did my freshman year. It was a great experience. A lot of the work um, made sense to me, came naturally to me. 
Um, and at the end of, towards the end of the, the semester, uh, second semester, towards the end of the school year, they were trying to book a replacement series on CBS called Freshman Dorm. And they, they, they looked all around town for this one character. He was just like the young, middle class, law student. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just literally too perfect. Right. Um, who was a freshman. And uh, one of the professors in school knew casting and got a bunch of us to go and read. Mm -hmm. And I went in and read. And I started getting called back. First, my first round of auditions ever. Okay. And I started getting called back. And I remember, I think it was either second or third round. I mean, I had nothing to have a car. My friends were driving me around the city. It was crazy. And I'm sitting in Steve Tisch's office. And he was like, so do you have a picture? And I was like, nah, I don't have a picture. I just, I'm still, you know, I'm still getting started. I'm a student, I'm a freshman. Um, which is the casting people loved. They were just like, he's a freshman. He's a real freshman. You he's know, they love, they, they love it when you're the, the thing, right? Right. And he said, and they said uh, do you have a resume? And I pulled out a binder and had some pool scap and a pencil. <laughs> and I started writing the plays I had done the last two That's semesters hilarious. as my resume. Tore it off and I handed it to him. Just, you know, oh. just knew nothing as a kid. Oh, and two weeks later, or a week later, I'm at CBS. Screen, and we didn't do screen test. At CBS, at, at, at Producers, at Final. And um, booked the pilot. And then we went off to do, we ended up doing, it was either five or six episodes. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of those episodes we beat Roseanne when she was balling. So we were wow. we were making a move that, that was positive and then we ended up switching nights and then our ratings dipped and then they, they canceled the show. It worked out great for me because right at that moment, I got to go right back to class. So it was almost like a summer job. Like I did a truncated series as a summer job. But it opened the doors and now I'm working with Millie Morris and I'm auditioning, I'm going to Disney, I'm I'm right. I'm, I'm getting I'm getting the the other part of the education, right. which is how I looked at it. Um and you know I'm going out, but I'm 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 horn green, so I'm not booking a lot, but mm -hmm. some guest spots here, this that family matters. It it was just enough that I could like be in school during the day, take care of those responsibilities. Did a little sound design as well. Mm -hmm. Take care of those responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And then um, read scripts at night because they're delivering them. And then a couple of times a week, I'm out, out in the world auditioning. Wow. And just got a really balanced mm -hmm. you know, education that way in terms of having to be in performance and theater school right. and that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So, okay. 